Oh, 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 Merry Christmas. Who's this Santa Claus character anyways? Are we able to save this holiday from the disaster it has become through this Babylon deception? Well, I think we can fish out the black magic. Now, before we do that, I'm going to play a little bit of white magic, which is uh, 432 hertz. It resonates with our body, which in return resonates with the Schumann resonance, which is the entire globe. So this is one of those little tricks to getting healing, is getting into the 432 hertz and, uh, and using sound healing to get deep inside yourself. And that's why all my recent music is in 432 hertz. Couple puppies back here, pretty comfortable. Hey Gandhi, hey Ruby, here. Stay, Gandhi, stay. You're in the shot, you gotta stay in there. Stay, good boy. <laughs> First of all, let's deal with this Santa Claus character. What does that have to do with Christ? Well, I assume nothing really. But uh, there's all sorts of stories like that he's a shaman from the north that went around collecting um, these magic mushrooms and passed them around to people and that's why he's the color of the mascaria mushroom. And there's other stories that uh, it's a celebration of Saturnalia, which is like Saturn is the uh, sun of the night is what they've called it. and there's these character here who well there's some who knows what the backstory is however it's not that anymore but what is it well first of all it's the first deception in a child's life so they call this character Chris Kringle so it's like a Christ right on Christ's birthday and he comes and he if you're naughty or nice he gives you presents and then when they're about three, four years old, they know that that was a lie. And then what do they associate that lie with? Christ, right? So this is psychological black magic they do to children. And so I, I, I'll have to say, like when I, last time I used this, I wore it for my niece. And uh, when I first came in, I saw her lighten up. She's like, oh my God, it, there it is. That's Santa. And she had... It was about five minutes before she knew it was me, but she still pretended that uh, that I was Santa, like she did it for me after, and I thought that was so cute. But um, I think that it's fine for us to keep this idea of Santa's jolly Saint Nick, right? But let's 
I think we should take this deception away because that's a that's a black magic we shouldn't play with with children. It's playing with Christ as it's just a he's just a false idea. And you know, some people be like, Christ is just false, this or that. You know what? People can argue about th their the history of it all, but those are just like lower sides of philosophy philosophy is like understanding why those stories are so important and why we wouldn't want to kill them and why we wouldn't want children to let those stories die from them like they let santa claus die so like that's the biggest thing why we need to speak out is for the children also you teach a child if you're naughty or nice you're gonna find out what you get? Are you gonna get coal or in your stocking? Well, the whole part of what Christ is is not acting for outcome. It's acting for truth. So I think what that teaches children is that you can pretend you're virtuous and go and be the nice person, nice person, and then you're going to get gifts, which is you're training people what is nice. Well, you know what? Sometimes the father doesn't seem nice, right? Sometimes truths are not nice. Like, it wasn't nice when Jesus was flipping tables, right? So this whole idea, this teaches children how to act through it and as if they're virtuous when they're not. They just go around smiling, make them all these friends, and they get the, they get the short-term gains of this world. But in the eyes of God, they've lost their credibility. And so, and they can all gain them back. That's the whole point, but we have to know when we've... About truth. And I think about what... What is a Jesus... What is Christ? Well, he's the Alpha and the Omega. If I were to like compare it to a band, he's the whole band and the lead singer and it all coming out perfectly, exactly how you needed it right in that moment in your heart, right? So the rest of us, we have to know what is our role as our Christ? What is our role in there? Are we playing the drums? Are we playing the bass? Playing the keys? Are we, are we switching lead singers? Because when we recognize and put our egos to the side, we'll know who's competent in all these different places because that's what creates the collective consciousness of Christ. It's us all coming together and creating the Alpha and the Omega. Knowing I'm the bass player, I'm gonna stick to the bass, and the rest of the band can't be as beautiful as they are without me sticking to those solid notes. Just as the drummer, Everybody relies on that Papa drummer that's keeping the tempo and they can always rely that he's always there because he's looking to the future and looking to the past. So, you know what? If I think of these two godly creatures, Ruby and Gandhi, you know, Ruby's the cuddly little sweetie that wants to cuddle all the time and love. And Gandhi's the one that's like scary and barking at the porch. But they're all like manifestations of God in a different way, right? She might be more of the bass and he's the drum beat, right? But she gets to be the bass because of how tight that drum beat is. So it's all of us knowing like we, if we're all trying to seek out the same archetype of Christ, then we're going to be uh, challenging each other instead of understanding what is our archetype inside of ourselves. What, what do, can I do to act as the Christ in my role? When I look back at like Louis Riel and what he did in his time, just imagine all the people that just know about him. I know an, a native elder that used to play as kids, and he would always they'd always take turns being Louis Riel or. Gabriel Dumont. So these are heroes. These are people that rose up and they were playing their notes in the symphony of this 
story that's been happening for thousands of years. And that's why their, their, their version of Christ, their stance, their po- little part of the Alpha and the Omega Christ consciousness is what's bringing us to what's right here. And we can accept those greatnesses. Those, if we can accept the greatness in people like that, then we'd be like, wow, I can see the greatness in myself. And sometimes there's a, it's, sometimes it it's, comes first from accepting the greatness of others, and then you accept it in yourself. And sometimes you have to accept it in yourself, and then you realize it in others. Everyone to their own, you know? So to me, that's what Christmas is about. And it's, it, to me, it doesn't as much represent the uh, birth in Bethlehem, like its original birth. It represents to me the, the death and rebirth because there's a time when the sun in the solstice doesn't move for three days and then it starts to rise. So the solstice is when the sun dies three days rises on the 24th on the 25th we celebrate so that you can it represents the reincarnation and what the reincarnation is in ourselves we can think of bringing that cycle right down what in each year what can i let go of this is the end of the year right so what things happen like what ideas did i carry that i can let go of now Well, I mean, I'm going to let go of one that kind of bothered me is that there's no way that Jordan Peterson could be as ignorant as he seemed in this um, interview with Netanyahu. And I put him a little bit in in this video here. I'll put it up here or here, wherever it goes. But it's just like that's him talking in on for the side of Israel, and he's new, the new prime minister of of Israel. And I there's a lot of people on both sides of that story that want to hear some truth. And he had all the time in the world to get some good questions to to try to maybe even resolve some of that conflict or. or it, if anyways, add, ask a few hard questions to that guy to try to bring something out of him. Instead, he gave, built him a pedestal to he, so he could show off all the cool things about himself and his bloodlines. And to me, like that, I've seen how Jordan Peterson's talked about things like the natives. And, and that's as if he, he, he can't be this ignorant to be two plus two equals four and two plus two equals five at the same time. You know, if he was, if he wasn't a smart fellow, then fine, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And you know what? There's a little part of me that's like, is he playing some kind of 5D chess? I don't understand. Because I, I've had visions about him helping bring a new order to the world. And you know what? Maybe he comes to a certain point and maybe there's a point where, um, soldiers have to decide to step down and maybe their way of step down is becoming fallen angels in a sense you know and i i pray that that's not the case and i pray that he is playing some kind of five-dimensional chess but he helped me develop a lot of myself and he was one of the people that uh you know initiated this uh, heart uh, and god connection and so i have such a hard time believing that he was that he's always been a part of all this craziness so i think he's more of a angel that may be uh, fallen and i i pray that it's not the case but this is one of those things that i have to a truth i i have to speak about somebody that has helped me a lot and that i speak um kindly of a lot this last situation it uh, challenges my belief in him so we'll see where it goes from here he he's had a lot of uh criticism towards him in that interview and i'll i'll put the interview down below but and i don't know enough about it to get into the ins and outs of all of it but the fact is is he better i want to hear him speak 
and talk about it to his critics on this conversation, then we'll see where he really stands, you know. So that's one of those things that I have to admit that I, that guy was, um, there was a part of me that felt that he was a bit too orthodox when it comes to to the thinkings of the Bible and stuff. And, and what I mean by that is that I, there's parts of the Old Testament where I'm like, I'm careful with calling it godly and um, <laughs> that sounds blasphemous but I'm, I'm there's there seems to be a difference in the mood of the God in the Old Testament and what Jesus is showing us what God is supposed to be so I, I all there's a part of me that's skeptical and it's called it's like it's like the original conspiracy theorist and, and it kind of relates to the Gnostic, Gnosticism a bit but the whole point of it is that I, if you are stuck on a narrative, then maybe your cognitive dissonance can be that strong that you won't allow it. But I, that's I'm giving him a lot to give him that he's ignorant in this situation, that he's just not that he's got some kind of mental illness that's keeping him from it. That's that's like me being generous in this situation, to be honest. And that's something that's just. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I, but that's the whole point of why we don't idolize anybody, because, it, because they can let you down, but they can also lead you astray. That's why you have to find your own uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, and and that's why a lot of Christians will just stick to the to the Bible, right? And they'll just because it's they maybe they just don't feel like they can go out in the wilderness and hack their way around and and help you know bring people out of the woods and that's that's their own thing like that's just like the buddhists that are up in the tops of the mountains meditating they're holding down some kind of uh, of spiritual ground for us anyways and that's their way of playing the strings underneath the the whole situation right but some of us have got true stories to fulfill in front of us and we all have stories to fulfill but some of us have uh, got fights that only we can deal with and that to me is what acting as Christ is it's, what is what what can I do to help not just right here in this moment not just for next week not for just a month the years what can I do to change waves right now that head into my niece's generation and beyond because that's those are the the acts that are are the noblest the ones that don't just affect you you know so you know it's a a representative the cosmic egg is is an idea of like a death and rebirth and so I, I actually drew up one a really nice one and put a bunch of little stick on crystals and stuff like that and I've already broken it but I got another one just to symbolize the same thing but uh, it's just an idea of like a, a rebirth to the universe for us all you know represents a rebirth for all the things inside myself and whatever I can what I've learned from this year and what I can learn inside myself and pass on to everybody else to help this awakening forward. So this is, this is represents the birth of our new world that we're going into. And that's, this is the new sun. The sun has rose, risen. And soon it will be providing us light to grow our vegetables, which is our life. And what is the sun of God the provider of life, but he's the truth too. He shows everything. The sun shows you everything. You can see everything. And so that's, that's why he's the truth, right? So, so that's why we'll put an end to the... Oh, those are pretty strong. <laughs> and we'll have a little sip of wine to, for a celebration.
You want a treat? It's a treat. God bless you. And I think um, a big part of where I can help people too, and I'm offering. Um, just a one-on-one -on -one chats like through zoom or whatever I'm gonna be putting some my email down below but um, sometimes we just need support in our mission I can't help you find your mission I don't know your life I don't know your mind but when you found your mission and found what you are I can support you in becoming even greater and that's but first, it's about you finding who you are. And I can't do anything until you've discovered that, you know. Because that's a lot of problem with religion, I feel, is that it's a lot of people telling them what a Christian is. And they're following this role. And they're following so strong that they miss their own destiny, right? So that's why it's we need support. And when we decided to speak our truth, we start to become who we are and people around us are either going to accept it and help us with it or they're going to attack and try to bring us down. And a lot of times we need help through those situations. And, and that's what we have to do in these times to help all the people that are trying to come up and be the body of Christ and come up and be the symphony orchestra. You'll be the bass, I'll be the drum. Sometimes we'll switch it up, right? That's what the collective Christ consciousness is. We have to create the alpha and the omega between all of us. And that's what true community is. So, And that's what Christmas should be about, is celebrating what I've done to be the Christ in my year. Or even repenting on the times that we haven't been the Christ that we should have been, and probably both, you know. So, much love, and you know what, I've been thinking about this, and I was like, I think it's a much love, there's a part of me that's like, I think that there's a defense mechanism that still uses that word, and that's why I want to put it to the side, because I love you all, and so I'm, from now on I'm just going to say, I love you, and God bless. Oh, oh, Merry Christmas! What do I got here for my dogs, huh? What? You got me cookies? You guys know that I can't have sugars like that? Well, they told you to give me eggnog and cookies? What does this suit have to do with Jesus Christ? I'm not too sure, actually. It's just a weird thing that we do here. And, uh, I got you guys a gift. Oh, look at that. Oh, are you happy with that? Yeah? Oh, is that a gift for the puppies? Yeah, is that what you guys like that or something? Yeah? Good puppies. And guess what? You get it no matter what. I wouldn't want you to try to pretend you're acting nice just to get treats. You gotta just be nice because the Lord's watching all the time. Right? Some kids' parents tell them, you only get these presents if you're really nice. And then all these people pretend to be nice all year. In the eyes of the people here on, instead of in the eyes of the Lord. And then they forget about what Christ is about. And the Christ is sometimes the guy that's not always nice. Sometimes Christ is the guy that tells you the truth. Gives you a yell at sometimes when you're too close to the road when it's dangerous. Things like that, right? And that's, that's not always uh, 
nice, is it? So what is what what is Jesus, huh? Who is this Christ character that we all love so much, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, this is for later. Oh yeah, how about I get you some treats? Okay. Okay, get back, get up here. Get back up here. Get back up here. Oh, you are just crazy. Here you go. Oh, you are just like that. You guys hungry? Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Hey, don't touch that, cookies. Okay, Merry Christmas. Yeah, and this is what... Hey, Christmas is about is love and being with your loved ones and your family. Yeah, the ones that love you for who you are. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs>